Hello, and welcome to this APCO basic science objective video about the physiology of labor. The objectives of this video are define the four phases of parturition and how they correlate to the stages of labor, describe the regulation of uterine activity in pregnancy, deconstruct the maternal and fetal signaling that initiate labor, and explain the role of oxytocin in the regulation of labor and stimulation of smooth muscle activity. Hey, medical student Zachary, how are you doing? Great, I'm just reviewing labor. I finished the APCO videos on intrapartum care and labor abnormality, so that was really helpful. I even reviewed the Freeman curve, so I'm ready for sign out. That is great, but you know, there are some changes to the way we think of labor. See, Freeman's curve had people moving very quickly after four centimeters, and he thought this is when you entered the active phase of labor. However, the Consortium on Safe Birth took a look at more recent data on labor and found that women progress much slower from 4 to 6 centimeters than previously considered, especially in nulliparous women. This has really helped us change our definition of labor dystocia as well as failed labor. Here's the paper citation so you can look at it before you sign out. That's great! Thanks so much! But just one more question, what actually starts labor? As in, what is the mechanism that allows some women to deliver a term and others preterm? Whoa, that is heavy. But you know, Dr. Nozal is on. I bet he will know the answer. Sit. I hear you seek knowledge of labor. This is a topic deep in basic science understanding. Now turn on the crystal screen of knowledge and let's get started. Here, young doctors, this is labor. Uh, Dr. Nozal? Uh, I don't understand. Maybe a little clarification? I see. Let's take it one step at a time, young doctor. Now listen, the uterine muscle is active throughout the phases of parturition. During phase one, quiescence, the uterine smooth muscle relaxes with maintenance of cervical structural integrity, inherent myometrium contractility is suspended. The uterine muscle is primarily unresponsive to stimuli. This is the prelude to parturition and occurs from conception to the initiation of parturition. Phase two of parturition is activation. This phase lasts until the onset of labor it is marked by cervical extracellular matrix changes that leads to increased tissue compliance, otherwise known as cervical softening. This softening is the result of increased vascularity, stromal hypertrophy, glandular hypertrophy, and progressive structural changes to the extracellular matrix. Cervical collagen undergoes conformational changes in the covalent crosslinks between proteins that alter tissue strength and flexibility. There are many factors associated with maintaining and then moving from phase one to phase two. However, much is unknown about the role of the fetus in these phases or how to manipulate these factors to prevent pathology, such as cervical insufficiency, increased prostaglandin synthesis in the uterus, increased gap junction formation in the myometrium, and upregulation of oxytocin receptors all occur during phase two of parturition. Progesterone and PG also affect cervical ripening, causing a breakdown of stromal elements that allows for the effacement and dilation in phase one and two of parturition. Phase three, the stimulation phase, begins with the onset of labor and ends with delivery. Labor at term is a multifactorial event with changes in myometrium, decidua, and cervix over days and weeks. The initial trigger for labor at term is thought to be activation of the fetal hypothalamic pituitary axis. The fetal HPA axis produces ACTH and the placenta produces corticotropin releasing hormone, or CRH, which act on the fetal adrenal glands to release production of DHEAS. DHEAS is then converted in the placenta to estriol and estradiol. Estriol enhances maternal decidual transcription of PGF2-alpha, prostaglandin, or PG, and oxytocin receptors and gap junction formation in the myometrium. 
During phase three, stimulation, endocrine, autocrine, and paracrine factors from the fetoplacental unit transform irregular contractions to regular contractions. Phase three is one of the most complex phases, and pathology here can lead to preterm labor, labor dystocia, and post-term pregnancies. In non-human mammals, we know that the fetus has a central role to play in initiating this cascade. However, in humans, this role is not well understood. In theory, the mediators we discussed previously, fetal cortisol, DHEAS, placental estriol, oxytocin, prostaglandin, and CRH may alter the receptor frequency during phase three to initiate and complete labor. More research is needed to understand the precise mechanism of human parturition. Let's pause, think, and apply. Which one of these mediators of labor do we already manipulate in an attempt to prevent recurrent preterm labor? Studies have demonstrated that weekly injection of 250 milligrams of 17 hydroxyprogesterone caproate from 16 to 36 weeks of gestation reduces the risk of recurrent preterm delivery. It appears that progesterone is important in maintaining uterine quiescence in the third trimester by limiting the production of stimulating prostaglandins and inhibiting the expression of genes regulating formation of oxytocin and prostaglandin receptors and gap junctions in the myometrium. Labor is associated with a functional withdrawal of progesterone activity in the uterus. Oh wow, but wait sir, you said there were four stages of partuition, but it seems like stage three was the end. What could be left? You are right to remember stage four, and it should not be trivialized. It involves uterine involution and return to pre-pregnancy physiology and anatomy. This is essential for maternal survival and is mediated by oxytocin. Recall that oxytocin is a peptide hormone that is synthesized in the hypothalamus and then secreted in a pulsatile fashion from the posterior pituitary and, interestingly, the decidua, extra embryonic and placental fetal tissue as well. Oxytocin stimulates smooth muscle uterine contractions. Receptor expression is increased nearly 200-fold during the second phase of parturition, or the activation phase. More receptors are located in the fundus of the uterus compared to the lower uterine segment. Oxytocin activates phospholipase C, which increases intracellular calcium. These increased calcium levels stimulate the calmodulin-mediated activation of myosin light chain kinase to affect uterine smooth muscle contraction. And remember, medical student Zachary, we can give oxytocin exogenously in labor and postpartum to further stimulate uterine contractions and thus overcoming dysfunctional labor or uterine atony. It is important to know, if we are augmenting labor with oxytocin, that the biologic half-life of oxytocin is only 3 to 4 minutes, while the circulatory half-life can be 10 to 12 minutes. And even more striking, the uterine effects can last as long as 20 to 40 minutes. You have learned much already, young doctor. Medical student Zachary, have we filled your thirst for knowledge today? Yes, but no, sir. I still want to know exactly why labor starts in some women and not others. But at least I now know what mediators to consider as I start my own research quest. This concludes this APCO Basic Science Objective video about the physiology of labor. You should be able to define the four phases of parturition and how they correlate to the stages of labor, describe the regulation of uterine activity in pregnancy, deconstruct the maternal and fetal signaling that initiate labor, and explain the role of oxytocin in the regulation of labor and stimulation of smooth muscle activity. Namaste, and thanks for watching.